similar to what you see on your cold water glass when you have ice in it. Over time, you start to see a lot of water droplets that condense on the outside of your glass. Water scarcity affects 1.1 billion people around the world, and the problem is getting worse with climate change. It's estimated that water stress could displace 700 million people by the year 2030. Atmospheric water is a possible solution. It's a resource equivalent to around 10% of all the fresh water found in all the lakes on Earth. But how do we get that water to the people who need it most? Two scientists have been working on some innovative techniques to pull water out of thin air. I grew up in California where droughts were pretty prevalent when I was a child. It serves a personal mission of mine to think about how we can give everybody in this world access to clean water. Professor Evelyn Wang is a mechanical engineer at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Her focus is to harvest water in a cost-effective way by adapting a technology that's been inspired by nature, known as dewing. Similar to what you see on your cold water glass when you have ice in it, over time you start to see a lot of water droplets that condense on the outside of your water glass. This condensation occurs in what is called the dew point, which is the atmospheric temperature below which water droplets begin to condense and dew can form. The exact temperature of the dew point varies depending on local pressure and humidity. The way to get below the dew point often is to cool your system so that you can start to condense. And at low humidity conditions, typically parts of Africa or India that have arid kind of climates too, it becomes infeasible because efficiency is so low in this process. You actually have to freeze the water before you can condense it. So that's why it becomes extremely challenging. Professor Wang's technology has found a solution to this. In this case, we use an adsorbent and really good extracting water at particular humidity conditions. We can then pack it into an architecture that allows us to kind of maximize the ability to absorb the water from the air. And then we use sunlight as a means to now release the water and then condense it such that you actually don't need refrigeration. The idea is so neat. Can you tell me a bit more about how it actually works? So basically we have a box. On the top of the box is a solar absorber. So it's almost like a black paint. And inside the box, then you have two layers consisting of this absorbent material inside a matrix so that when you have this box open, the water in the air gets captured onto this material. The material which captures the water is a type of porous layer in which dust-sized crystals are embedded. These crystals are of a metal organic framework known as MOF801. As air flows through the box, the MOF effectively grabs the water out of the air. Sunlight then heats the top of the box, driving the water onto a condenser where it cools and drips into the collector. Nearly 2,000 miles away, another team has been immersed in a similar problem. Agriculture consumes more water than any other source, and water scarcity will have a big impact on food production with global warming. One of the key challenges in the conventional agriculture is as the temperature increases with the global warming, so the water runoff and water evaporation becomes even more significant. So you actually need a more amount of water to be able to irrigate into the system. Professor Yu is a mechanical engineer at the University of Texas at Austin. His solution is to coat soil with smag or super moisture absorbent gel. And this technology works with a natural dawn to dusk cycle. So you can imagine in the um, humid cold night, so you can actually store the water in this gel coated soil. And then in the daytime, so the water can be slowly released. 
into the plants, so help the plants to grow. So it's really kind of we wanted to mimic what nature does like the best. We want to learn from the nature. So the smack gel has two chemical ingredients. One of the components is this moisture absorbing gel. Basically, it's a very special type of polymer. They can absorb the uh, water very efficiently from the ambient air. And the other ingredient is this thermal responsive polymer, which actually is can release water very effectively just under natural sunlight. So this special part of the smag we actually designed to produce the clean water without intensive energy consumption. The gel is mixed in a 3 to 1 ratio with sandy soil. Experiments so far have found that the hydrogel soil was able to retain water better, and it needed far less additional water to grow plants. Are there any environmental implications with mixing the gel in soil? Like, does it leave any sort of residue? So some of these polymers already being used in um, biological fields, working with the human body. So they definitely will not have any of the negative impacts on the crops. But that actually requires like further long-term analysis because of these special conjugated polymer haven't been used extensively like in the agriculture. The gel mix has the potential to reduce irrigation in agriculture and also expand farming to areas that are currently too dry to farm. So if you think about it, where the population continues to grow, I think the ability to grow more food on the previously um, poor quality or inhospitable land becomes increasingly important. It's early stages yet, but both teams have clear ambitions for where they see the technology heading. It doesn't require a lot of maintenance. You just put it on your rooftop. You just rely on the sun. We can probably extract amount of water typical for a single person for a day. If we can make it to be very cost effective and be widely adopted in the next five to 10 years, I think that will be the proudest moment for my personal um, uh, kind of journey in, in research. So much science and tech in that story. And if you want more of that, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and hit the bell button below for notifications.